Well, thank you. Uh, f the first thing first, I would like to uh, thank uh, Hussein and, and uh, everybody at ITEM for uh, this great, great idea of having a 25-year celebration. Uh, uh, it, is, it is great to see many, many faces and, and to be, still be able to recognize them. Uh, uh, because first, my memory may, may be uh, uh, lacking, but also uh, faces changes over time. Um, not only faces, but anyway, that's the main one that I want to talk about. So uh, this will be a, a talk about ultra-cold atom-ion uh, interactions, but uh, as uh, uh, many of you uh, n may know, I'd like to, to talk about some of my early days here and how ITEMP uh, was really a, a great help for me. So the first part of the talk will be about science at ITEMP science that I was involved in and how uh, ITEMP has been basically a springboard for me. Um, so some of that will be with the early days also of the, uh, of the topic, which is atom ion, will be also covering that. And then I'll talk about charge transfer and uh, effect of isotope shifts on, on, on those collisions, the fact that you can uh, see feshback resonances and um, where we're going after that with the atom ions, anyway, from my perspective. But first thing first, as I mentioned, uh, ITEMP is one of the places where a lot of the pioneering uh, uh, work in, in atomic physics, atomic and optical and molecular physics, has been done over the years and still being done. And, and I'll give some examples of where I was lucky enough to be involved. Um, uh, you know, ITEMP is one of those places where uh, uh, you go and, and there's a lot of People, it's a focal point where a lot of people come and you discuss, you have a coffee, and then, then ideas uh, 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 occur. And, and from that, you, you take tangents and you uh, find interesting stuff to do. So one of the first things I was involved in, and that goes towards the, the, uh, uh, what Hussein was mentioning at the beginning, one of the uh, key player, if not the key player, was Alex. And Alex has this great uh, 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 insight about where things, or necessarily what would be important, basically, to, to, to study. And one of the first uh, uh, thing was the formation of ultra-cold molecules. So actually, um, the first experiment was in 1998. But in 1997, together with Alex, and this is me in those days, you see the difference. You know, 25 years will do that to you. Alex hasn't really changed. Uh, uh, <laughs> well, I know I should grow a beard, and then it will be okay, right? Uh, <laughs> so this is just to to mention. Alex had this foresight that uh, before that we've been working on uh, on photo association and in lithium, etc., uh, trying to uh, uh, also understand some experiments of Randy Hewlett in, in 1994, etc. And um, uh, Alex had the, 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 the foresight to say, well, you know, we should be able to produce cold molecules with that. So that's what we looked at. We had all the, the data, in a way, all the numerical stuff. And the idea was, well, if you go and you have two atoms colliding and you excite, and well, some of them will go down. And could we find the right path to form ultra-cold molecules? And so that was, you know, 1997. Uh, where is that? Somewhere in there. <laughs> so, so, uh, um, so that's, again, to sh illustrate uh, 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 some of the uh, uh, great uh, uh, things of being at, at ITEMP. You are in the presence of great minds, and, and also you um, can take advantage of, of knowing where uh, uh, the field might go, or influencing the field in many ways. Another one was uh, of my early work was with uh, quantum suppression. So you re recognize this guy, Rick. And this was, uh, uh, again, a bit of follow-up on, on some of the work I did with Alex on cold collisions. And Alex is also there. And this was a simple idea that, well, you know, if you have a, 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 a ultra-low temperature system, uh, you'll, guess, you'll, you'll get less less uh, uh, flux at short distance, and you get, therefore, a quantum suppression of, of the, the incoming flux. And we got all kinds of, of analytical solutions for that. And that led to work with Harald Friedrich, who was actually, again, as part of the ITEM program, visitors program, 
came for about a month in 1997, 98, 97, I think. Yeah, yeah, uh, and and came for one month, and then uh, we extended this work from quantum suppression to quantum reflection, and that opened up, at, uh, you know, uh, 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 a door for a lot of studies about. Uh, um, uh, how this effect would vary for uh, different power laws, etc., etc., with a bunch of analytical solutions. Another topic, and this is with uh, when the BC uh, uh, frenzy started, which was, uh, you know, following one, well, the experimental work, but one of the first, if not the first workshop, I think, in the field was here at, uh, at, uh, at uh, uh, ITEMP, I think it was 95, but maybe 96? I don't remember. 95, okay. And, and uh, from, you know, this was again an example of how ITEMP has been a, 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 at the forefront of, of AMO uh, uh, physics. And one of the uh, things that came out of that is, uh, for me anyway, working with A.D. Timmermans, who was a postdoc at the same time. So again, at ITEMP, you have this overlap with a lot of great people. And, and with Eddie and many others, you may remember uh, Paolo Tomassini uh, also, and, and we, we looked at what happened if you put a, um, uh, uh, if you have a flashback resonance that would allow you to have basically a pair of atoms and, and or, for, or a molecule, and uh, that you would get an oscillation between the population of, of atoms, uh, sorry, atoms and molecules. And those oscillations over time would, would decay slowly. And that was basically, so that was in 99. And a couple of years later, that, there was an experiment by uh, uh, Carl Weinman and, and others at, uh, at, uh, in Boulder, uh, where they observed those, those, uh, those uh, oscillations. Finally, the last topic that I want to mention is, is you know, where I was involved and where, uh, again, uh, ITEM has been a focal point and, and a springboard in many ways, has been uh, with uh, uh, Rydberg Physics. So that was in 2000 with Misha that we recognize here uh, with a smile. Uh, this was uh, uh, about uh, uh, Rydberg blockade. So the idea of, of having uh, uh, the interaction between Rydberg atoms being so strong that uh, if you try to excite uh, pairs of, of Rydberg atoms nearby each other, they would actually block, the, if one is excited, it would block the uh, excitation of a second one or of any one within a sphere of, of, uh, of radius blockade. Um, so, uh, and that in many ways uh, uh, started a lot of the activities with Rydberg atoms, what are called Rydberg atoms, because now they could uh, uh, be linked also to the uh, uh, quantum information uh, uh, research. So those were just my my personal uh, uh, examples where um, my uh, link with item has been extremely extremely uh, uh, fruitful. Again, uh, I'm a bit particular in that sense because I was here as a student and as a postdoc later on. So actually, uh, when I came in, I recognized many faces and I assumed people knew each other, and I realized that. Uh, uh, there's few other people that have been here uh, many, many years, but uh, I realize that uh, uh, many people are from various generations and don't necessarily know each other, so I feel privileged to have been in that position. Anyway, so let's go now to the topic. Why are we interested in ultra-cold ion uh, scattering? Um, well, one of the reasons is it's a very large uh, one of our to the fourth potential. And as Lee was mentioning, a lot of interesting things can, can take place there. Um, so it's because they have a large uh, uh, one of our to the fourth potential, actually they will have a, a very big, uh, uh, sizable scattering cross sections. So it might be possible to maybe cool the ions by elastic collisions with the neutral atoms. And, and a lot of the issues with trapped ions is that the, the, uh, you have this micro motion, and it's hard to cool them. And one idea was, well, let's put them in a bath of, of uh, cold atoms, and you'll be able to cool the, the, motion, the, the, the ions like that. Now people are going a bit further than that these days, but this was the original, some of the original ideas. It could be also important to study charge transfer. 
in in the system. So having a, a cold atoms and then see if the, the charge is jumping onto the next guy uh, or not, and can you control that? There's been many uh, experimental efforts in that respect. Uh, one of the first proposals was actually at uh, UConn by Wynne Smith, uh, who uh, was proposing, and by now has been able to get some of those results, on uh, putting calcium plus in a gas of sodium, which are called sodium atom. Since then, uh, there have been a lot of work also uh, you know, by Johannes uh, Denschlag, uh, uh, Michael Kerr, uh, and of course at MIT by Vladan uh, 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 on the on in this case, on mixtures of ytterbium. And one thing that uh, uh, we worked on was also possibility of making a uh, uh, molecular cluster of having a uh, uh, having bunch of atoms surrounding an ion. So those are motivations. But first, the early days of that topic, and I, I, I take this, this opportunity again to stress how the, uh, uh, my uh, 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 acquaintance with, with Alex in that sense has been extremely uh, uh, fruitful. So I was, uh, uh, I was just basically uh, uh, finishing my postdoc here before starting at, at, uh, at UConn. And at that time, Alex uh, uh, got hold, I think, of a uh, thesis by Sylvie Magnier from uh, Amy Coton, where she had uh, calculated the potential curves for, for, I think, lithium, sodium, and potassium, I think. I might be, uh, uh, and she had also the uh, potential curves for the uh, atom ion. So we uh, were very interested in knowing, well, you know, People have been looking at ultra-cold atom between uh, ultra-cold collisions between neutrals. What happens if you have uh, uh, atom ions? And we were interested in looking at the mobility of the the charge atom in that gas using some of the tools that actually uh, Alex developed, you know, quite a while earlier, and 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 using those tools to see if they were applicable, or or would we get something interesting, uh, different? So. We performed quantum calculations, and we were, you know, finding that they were agreeing fairly well with with uh, some semi-classical uh, treatment. And in a way, we had no clue where things would go at that point. It was just curiosity. So we have the curves. Uh, nobody's done it. Uh, we know something should happen. What exactly? We don't know. So let's just do it. So just a quick review uh, of what could happen. Well, if you had two sodium. Uh, at uh, particles, so uh, sodium and sodium plus colliding, uh, they collide along two curves, a gerada and a gerada, and you could have a elastic process where the charge remain on the same on the same uh, atom, or you could have a charge transfer where it would jump. Uh, however, since they are identical particles, it's a bit difficult to know if what happens. But again, like in in the the neutral case, everything is dictated. Uh, to a, a, a great extent by the long-range uh, interaction. So in this case, you have the 1 over R4, which is the dipole possibility, 1 over R6, which is basically the quadrupole in other terms, and then you have the exchange term, which has a 1 over R in front. So you have the exponentially decaying, basically, and then you have 1 over R in higher orders. And because these potentials are very strong, uh, even at low, fairly low temperature, uh, uh, you still have maybe uh, uh, many, many partial waves that could contribute. And, uh, and then uh, one could even uh, use semi-classical uh, treatment for the uh, scattering uh, uh, phase shifts. So, um, of course, we did calculate them you know, using quantum calculations, but we checked if they were agreeing with semi-classical treatment. And what we, uh, oh, before that, these are the kind of potential curves we see as a function of the separation. You have the energy here. This is the gerada, and this is the ungerada doublet sigma uh, plus, and this is a zoom of this region. There, uh, so there is enough, there is a, a, a well at large distance. So this is the kind of results we were getting at the time. So the elastic, if you want, we can see that first, the first thing we notice is uh, the elastic cross-section that you see here as a function of the energy, so log scale, um, are orders of magnitude larger 
than in the case of neutral neutral. So this is a singlet and triplet neutral sodium atoms, and this is a charge, uh, the elastic for atom ion. And there's orders of magnitude, so which implies that for a, you could maybe cool the ions using the neutral gas. It very, looks very efficient. The, the red line is the semi-classical result, which is basically that, which tells us that unless you had very low, low temperature, on this scale, 8.5 is 1 millikelvin. So it, you can see that uh, at 1 millikelvin and above, you're basically uh, 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 you're describing the system with semi-classical physics almost. Then we looked at the charge transfer. And for the charge transfer, we, we saw the following. You have the S wave regime here. Then you have this. And then you have this regime here. So this is basically something that is uh, behaving like the a simple Langevin model, uh, a classical Langevin model uh, uh, for cross-section. You basically, if you pass the centrifugal barrier, you get a short distance, you react, and you have a charge transfer. If you just do that, you get this, this line. So everything was following uh, uh, very much the semi-classical treatment in a large range of energy. From once you have the cross-sections for, uh, for the charge transfer, you can calculate the uh, diffusion cross-section, which I don't go into details here, but they basically are the same, very close to the same. And once you have that, you can calculate the mobility. So that was the, the key thing was to calculate the mobility. How easy is it for the charge to move in if you apply uh, basically a small electric field? Um, so this mobility is, is given in terms of the diffusion uh, uh, coefficient itself as a function of the uh, diffusion cross-section. Averaged, and what we were getting as a function of the energy, uh, the temperature, the mobility is basically flat. The the black curve is the uh, quantum calculation. The blue and red curves are two different uh, 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 classical, if you want, uh, uh, um, approximations. And you could see that uh, it's basically flat until you reach ultra low temperature, uh, where probably this approximation would. Uh, uh, fail. Um, then the question we, we had was, what happens if you actually are cooling a system very low uh, to very low temperature? And uh, then the idea was, well, maybe what happens is, is although uh, uh, the system is not really moving much, uh, and you're still you're not in a uh, Bose-Einstein condensation condition where you don't have overlap of the De Broglie wave, wave, uh, wave functions, you may still have a rapid growth of the charge transfer cross sections. And if you define a, 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 a length for the charge transfer, maybe this length for the, the rho for the charge transfer happened to overlap with a nearby neutral. And it might be more uh, efficient, if you want, for the system to just have a quick jump of the electron instead of the charge moving, uh, the heavy charge, meaning the ion, to, to be moving. So uh, with that in mind, we can define a, a mobility as a hole instead of, of, of a hole jumping instead, instead of just the heavy ion moving. And you can find a diffusion for this hole, uh, a mobility in terms of a diffusion. And we're applying a, a simple statistical uh, model of, of a, a, a random uh, walk, if you want. You can show, oh, well, sorry, I'll go back. I won't go back. I'll go continue. You can you can find this uh, this uh, mobility, and what you find is the mobility of the hole suddenly would increase, would pick up, would become the dominant uh, behavior. So if you cool your system and you apply a small electric field, it looks like the charge would be moving with a mobility. And at some point, if you cool the system even more, suddenly, instead of the charge moving, it would be the electron jumping from one side to the other. Uh, and, and you know, we, we mentioned a, a possible uh, uh, way to detect that in those days, which was, uh, well, let's see, you have a, 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 a cloud of atoms, uh, and you take a two-photon excitation there and ionize the atom at that point. You apply an electric field, and then you see how long it takes for the ion or the charge to hit the detector. Uh, if, it's, if the charge is moving with 
the ion, the, the ion it should be a long time because it's heavy to accelerate. It would be a long time. And if you cool more and then suddenly the charge happens to arrive much faster, then it would be the whole mobility. Uh, since then, uh, I'll come back to that at the end, but uh, just mention that uh, there are experiments now by Tilman Fall where he could realize that using Rydberg, uh, ultra cold Rydberg atoms. Uh, so if there's a question at the end, I will try to answer that. Hint. Okay. Um, so a next topic would be, okay, uh, or a natural e e expansion on that would be, uh, okay, what if you put now an ion in a condensate? And this was work done with Vasily and Misha. Uh, and I won't go over the details here, but basically the idea was if you put a, a, an ion in a condensate, you have a one of R to the fourth interaction between the ion and the atoms, and then you could have a pair of atoms colliding in the presence of this ion. One of them uh, would be captured by the ion, the other one will take off uh, the, the angular momentum and the extra energy, and because it's a cold, uh, uh, it's, a, it's a BC, uh, this excitation would be actually a phonon. And you could capture many, many atoms around the ion forming a, a excited cluster. Uh, so we built a simple model, but this simple model in many ways was one of the reasons why many people, experimentalists, started to, to go in that, in that field. Uh, because they were interested in, in seeing can we form this metastable droplet or bubble uh, of of, uh, of uh, neutral atoms captured by the ion. So I, I, a bit more history, sorry about that. So again, uh, in 2001 I was mentioning that when Smith uh, uh, proposed uh, uh, trying to do this kind of, of mixture or hybrid trap with sodium, the calcium plus in a, in a gas of sodium. And, and uh, this was uh, uh, presented in this, in this uh, uh, workshop. And we did some calculations for this system, and basically it was the following. You have uh, the atoms, the, ca uh, the atoms would collide with the calcium plus and uh, would go back. However, there would be the possibility of, of emitting a photon and having a charge exchange. Now the charge would be under calcium. However, this is not very efficient. This is uh, 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 work following uh, 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 some treatment that, that Alex um, uh, showed me. <laughs> Actually, you should be a co-author on that because <laughs> I learned uh, the trick from, from you how to, to do that. Um, anyway, it's, this was very, very poor uh, uh, rate coefficient. And that was the, the point me being that it should be possible to, to cool uh, calcium plus by collision with sodium because this rate, the charge transfer, would be very, very weak. So there have been a long silence in that field of atom ions after that. Uh, until, again, ITEM being instrumental, there were a, uh, um, a topical group organized by Tommaso uh, Calarco. I think it was 2007, yes. Uh, and he got other people here, and, and we talked about it, and then things started to, to move first a bit slowly, but then much faster. And for example, uh, there are papers now on, on sodium calcium plus uh, using also MQDT, uh, some of the work with Bogao, for example, etc., and, and also some uh, ideas of using uh, uh, atom ion to do uh, gates for, for quantum information. The earliest experiment on charge transfer was the experiment by uh, Vladan at, uh, at MIT on uh, ytterbium. So what he did was to put, uh, um, he had a, a surface uh, where you could trap uh, uh, the ions, and he had a mutt of atoms. So he, in order to be able to see if you had a charge transfer and to visualize the two ensemble differently, he used different isotopes. So you had ytterbium 174, I think, and 172. I may be wrong there, but two of the uh, uh, two different isotopes, so you could image them separately and see if it was an ion or, or an atom. So together with uh, uh, Pang Zhang, we uh, calculated, and Alex, we calculated the interaction curves for ytterbium 2 plus, 
And again, at large distance, there is a well. Using those, we calculated the cross-sections. Again, the elastic cross-sections, very similar to the case of the sodium, uh, the earlier work in 2000. It basically, it's a following the semi-classical constant rate. The more interesting thing was what happened with the charge transfer for different isotopes here. You see that they kind of behave, they kind of follow this, uh, this uh, 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 Langevin uh, um, uh, behavior, but not really. Some, some uh, isotopes did not. And uh, it looks very much that there's something pulling this, this cross-section down. Um, uh, we worked on that. We actually never published it, so Alex, we should uh, work on that because we have the answer. Uh, uh, the reason for that is actually it looks like you have S wave, although S wave should not contribute at those large uh, uh, re uh, interactions. It looks like uh, the fact that the, the 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 two S wave scattering length, if you want, or phase shifts are almost Id are very close to each other at low low energy seems to be pulling down the whole curve. So we have a small semi-classical model for that, and it turns out that it looks like it works. But um, I won't go into details for that. Uh, OK. All right. So uh, using those cross sections, we can calculate the rate coefficient. And well, the Langevin, uh, uh, as a function of the energy, collision energy, the uh, Langevin model gives you this, this uh, constant rate, and the experimental rates were somehow in there. And uh, depending, though, on the uh, isotopes you would use, you would get very different rate. But you know everything is kind of consistent. You need to go to much lower energy temperature to, uh, to see that. So what about isotope effects? Because uh, those, those measurements were done with different isotopes of ytterbium. So the idea is that let's see if we can do something where we would take into account the isotope effects. And uh, again, uh, what we did first is, well, let's look at the simplest possible system where we can calculate something, which is beryllium. So we did calculations on the curves of beryllium. And what you find is the following. You have a, a, the deeper one, which is a doublet sigma u. And then you have the, the first. Well, the, 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 same, the curve going to the same asymptote has a double well. And this region here is actually deep enough to have bound states as well. This kind of interesting structure. So we spent a bit of time trying to analyze that. This is in this paper. But after, but then we, we uh, with uh, uh, Alex, Pong Zhang, OK, uh, before that, uh, if you use different isotopes, this is what you would get for the elastic and the charge transfer, they, they kind of behave the same way as all the other view graphs I showed you. So uh, this is a charge transfer. Now, uh, I, I'll go a bit faster because I saw a, a, a few, thing, few digits in the, in the air. So uh, we, uh, again, with uh, uh, Pang and, and, uh, and Eko Bodo, we looked at the uh, effect of the isotope shift in the collision. So because of the small difference in masses, et cetera, you'd get that if you, you, could, uh, if you, if you try to uh, get the charge transfer, so the charge jumping, if you want, or the electron jumping from the 10 to the 9 to go up. Oh, there's a plus missing here. It should be a plus. You would have to uh, uh, have this extra energy. Otherwise, it's not allowed. So for that, uh, all the coupling needed to cal be calculated in non bonopanomic corrections, if you want. And these are the results that were obtained. So at large uh, energy, both, uh, uh, both what we call the excitation or the quenching, depending on which asymptote you come from. Quenching is you come from above and you collide and you go to the charge transfer. Elast uh, uh, excitation is from below and you excite the charge transfer, if you want, would behave the same way at large uh, energy. And then suddenly, of course, this will go like uh, 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 go down. And this one would go like 1 over k, basically. Um, and uh, there are the rates, uh, same, same kind of behavior, very different at, lo at low temperature. The other alkaline earths should all have the same kind of behavior, by the way. So we did the calculations of the beryllium, uh, calcium, magnesium, and strontium. Except for magnesium, all the others will have a double well. It doesn't look like it much, but there's actually a double well. And there's also this state 
coming down and crossing. It's not really crossing here, but anyway, there will be interesting dynamics for that. So I will finish my, my talk with Back to the Future, which is really um, what happens now with if you put in a magnetic field. So like in ultra-cold neutral, you expect some fetchback resonances if you have a, a magnetic uh, 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 hyperfine structure. So in the case of uh, beryllium, this is what we obtained. I don't go into details because we don't have time. So basically, depending on which, which uh, incoming channel, you will, you will find uh, nice fetchback resonances between the, 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 the uh, beryllium 9 and beryllium 9 plus. And again, uh, if you look at the, the uh, cross-section uh, for different uh, fields, you find, comparing the inelastic and the elastic, you could find reg uh, uh, regimes where actually the elastic would be larger than the inelastic. Uh, I see Bala being impatient. So, um, the same, anyway, you can find, depending on the channels, you can find tons of flashback resonances, which means that you could manipulate the charge transfer. And all that to say that now, if you can manipulate the charge transfer, you could take different isotopes, and really, because you can image them differently, you could see if the charge did change, jump or not. So, I won't go into details there, blah, 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 just to say that. Uh, there were some results at uh, UConn by uh, Wynne Smith, finally. And um, future directions, um, uh, 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 well, uh, we need to do better uh, uh, structure calculations. We need to actually also work on, uh, harder on the long-range interactions, the, bon uh, the corrections, the bond parameter, the shift. And, and we're going to look now, the next step for us is to look at the scattering, including the, uh, with flashback resonances or hyperfine interactions, including the, the shifts. So we're now working towards that. And this is the people who were involved in many of those calculations. But I want to thank first ITEM for, oh, for, okay, for opportunities. For opportunities. Uh, <laughs> great science. Uh, the many collaborators and the many friends also. So with that, I finish, and here's the people involved. Thank you. Only if you don't have charge uh, hopping, you mean? Yeah, then you would not see the statistics. Yeah, with the charge hopping, I don't think you would see. You would see, but but uh, at the time we did not look at what uh, for for the, uh, the, the the molecular ion. Uh, we we looked only at bosons. Uh, so actually, you're right. If you in uh, well, you you would need uh, the pairing uh, there. So it will be interesting to see how this affects the the. Uh, the model. At the end, this was a simple model that we put together. So uh, there's many things that were uh, neglected. For example, the effect that the ion de polarize the atoms, and then you get a dipole-dipole interaction between the atoms while they're colliding with the ion. If you take that into account, it also changes the. Actually, it's, uh, the effect is like screening the, the charge a little bit, etc. So there's many things that needs to to be added to the to the model. But yeah, thank you. Yep.
Well, the, the, you mean the isotope effect in, in the curves? Yeah, but only the actual uh, cross section. I mean, you do the, the charge transfer cross section. Well, okay, but you, you're doing, uh, is it the same element? No, it's, well, Bernie's calculation was for the terbium and calcium. But okay, then I will not expect anything there. I think the effect will be very large when it's quasi resonant. So if. Yeah, well, well, the, the, basically in, in the beryllium uh, results, it was basically the, the effect uh, uh, kicked in when you were basically hit, uh, having energies close to the isotope shift. Before that, there's nothing. And the isotope shift was 10 minus 5, uh, I think. So, well, so. The, the cool experiment, they claim a uh, large isotope. Yeah. And extract the long range parameters still doesn't uh, show this effect. But you, you, yeah, but you, you still have, an if, you still have a, a, a shift yeah, between the two asymptotes. Yeah. yeah. And, and I don't remember the experimental uh, results if uh, this, that was a few years back. Yeah, uh, uh, 2012, the nature of the Cole's experiment was. Okay. So I think we can move uh, yeah. well, have one last yeah, yeah. question. Check it, Brendan. Yeah, maybe you write spin orbit here will support a lot of six more. Well, in the interest of time, we uh, 